Welcome back to Pacific Drive. We're heading to the Deep Zone Crossing, and to get there we need to explore this area. So I'm going to head to G1 to get there, and I'll bring you back when something interesting happens. Poppy, I gotta ask, were you around when the old wall was nearly breached? You want to know if I was involved? I mean, sure. No one knew more about where anomalies came from than you. Heck, I mean, you know, the only reason anyone knew anything about anomalies was because of the research branch that you four started to build. Yes, and we developed ways to prevent anomalies, not create them. You can't prevent something if you don't know where it's created in the first place. So you did pick up a thing or two around us scientists. All I know is, I didn't give two craps about anomaly prevention. You fought uphill the entire way. Never thought I'd see the day where you'd sugarcoat anything coming out of your mouth. The Harmonic Disruption Research Lab was an abject failure. No, I wasn't involved, but I stood by and let it happen. By that point, the Limb Project was in a bad way. Either it found a breakthrough and justified the government resources it was sucking up, or the entire project was put down. Everything depended on this technological quantum leap that evaded us for decades. In response, all good sense went straight out the window. For every wonder pulled out of thin air, limb technology conjured increasingly greater horrors. But it was done in the name of progress, and we were powerless to stop it. The Harmonic Disruption Research Branch was all I could do to soften the atrocities Arda unleashed in the name of progress. I tried to clean up my mess, but I failed. All right, heading to C5, back roads. Unstable. So I'm going to try to collect as much, uh, what is it called? Swamp Coral, I believe it was. I'm going to try to collect as much as I can. This is the Myers, so there should be plenty of it. Now that I have the thermal vacuum, it shouldn't be a problem to get it. And with that, I should be able to make the amp engine that runs on electricity and has a lot more horsepower than our current engine. Yeah, anyway, we have no second chances, fuel evaporation, and swift storm. All right. Swamp coral is in water. So I guess I just want to go to any place with water. We have a swift storm, so I don't want to stay here too long. Mm, well, I think I need to collect energy if I want to leave anyway, so... I suppose I should just... Hmm. I should probably get these two. They're up on a mountain, so... Yeah, let's, let's go up there. Oh yeah, check out our new boost, by the way. It seriously boosts. It does also seriously take your electricity. Oh, storm's coming already. take a right. Yeah, let's make good use of our boost. I gotta be fast. In fact, can I just boost up the damn mountain? I wouldn't be able to get up here without a boost, but with a boost? Let's see. Oh, hell yeah. Oh my god. Whoa! Like I said, hell yeah. Is this the swamp coral that I want? I think it is. Yeah, swamp curl. Co blah, blah, blah. Swamp curl. I think I need like 360 or something. I need a lot. How many did I get? About 120? Okay. It's pretty good. Wait, there's more already. Ah, we should look for a new spot. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Oh. You can crush into these. Power sources are nearby. 
I can just go straight up any damn like it as long as it's less than 90 degrees I can go up it with my boost power's just down here oh more curl Don't stick me. Okay, I've got enough power to leave. Yeah, I suppose we should just go, huh? Gateway's open. What the hell is that? I guess that's just the storm. I'll just take the acid. It's fine. Some more power right here. Might as well take it, right? Why not? Get me the hell out of here. I don't think I have enough coral to um, make the engine, so if I see another group of coral, I'm going to take it. Son of a... Any other coral up here? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We Yeah, no, no, no coral. We need to get the fuck out of here, like, right now. Woo! That was quite the zoom. Let's go. That was cutting it close. I don't know what happens if the red gets to you. Do you just instantly die? Maybe it just does DOT to you? That was a little bit scary. Let's make some cosmetic changes. I haven't done that for quite a while. So our dash little bobble thing has been a brick wall. Let's change it with the howdy grade. Looks like we still just have the succulent for the dangler from the rearview mirror. Nothing interesting for the wheels. Um. Hmm, instead of the shock absorber shifter, we can go to the tool shifter. Yeah, why not? And for the emblem, there's... Ah, right, we have the pirate ship right now. Let's switch it for a castle. We have the spud light for the um, antenna. Let's switch it with a surfboard. We got some stickers. Right. This is the back left. Not today, Satan. I've had that pretty much from the beginning. Um. Do I only? Yeah, I just have the flags that are there by default and then just these three. So I've only gotten two more stickers since the not today, Satan one. I don't know. Eat my dust. Why not? 
take a look at some of them. There's our little castle. There's our surfboard. Let's look at the bauble and the shifter. There's our little howdy gr- <laughs> When you wobble it, it just wobbles the arm and the hat. Tip in the hat. Okay, that's pretty cute. I love tardigrades. All right, and the shifter. Nice. I mean, I don't love it, but it's nice to have it being just something a little bit different. We have a new fax. June 27th, 1969. Describing his actions as downright peculiar, Olympia police have detained the man for further questioning, but say they have not yet pressed charges. Meanwhile, protests continue downtown as federal workers and their families express their displeasure at ongoing ARDA layoffs. I really want to make that engine before I head to the Deep Zone Crossing, so I am going to... I think go to G1, G3, D2, and then end up here in the Acrid Waters, a place that I have not explored yet. And the main purpose is really just to hit these two zones here that are in the mire, so I can get more coral. I also need some more plasma. Hopefully I can pick that up along the way as well. Hey, this thing's new. Pickpocket. Yeah, it just like launched something at my face. I guess I tried to pick my pockets? Finally made it to my destination, the unexplored highway point. And there's a message here, which is cool. But what's even cooler is that there's this. And I have no idea what that symbol even means. It's not even on the legend. Oh, is this one of those stabilizer towers? Previously, I've had a mission for every one of these that I've done. This one I don't have a, a quest for, so can I still do it? Yeah, it'll still let me do it. Okay. Well, I definitely don't want to do that just yet. That's the final thing I should do in the zone. has ever faced the answer is you don't this is frequency file episode three the human cost last episode i reported all the cold hard facts i could get my hands on if you missed that episode here's the summary there wasn't much now we jump tracks to the stories of the people to knit together old records and eyewitness accounts to form some fabric of the true story. Whoever's job it was at Arda to suppress stories did a really good job. What they did to keep that sheer number of people from talking, and then to smear the stories that did come out, was a masterstroke of obfuscation. Unfortunately for Arda, the cases that made it all the way to court became public record. And the facts were these. Arda played nice at first with a generous relocation package. They offered cold, hard cash and built sprawling housing complexes in nearly every state to resettle the former residents. These new communities were built as idyllic, white picket fenced neighborhoods where you were sure to be surrounded by all American families who shared your same values while enjoying the benefits of government subsidized grocery stores, school districts, and manicured public parks. Not a bad deal from the looks of things. When it came to the holdouts, the people who wouldn't leave for any amount, things got ugly. But in the end, the government won out, as it always does. And while the government has the sovereign right to seize private property, the Fifth Amendment mandates just compensation be paid for it. But it doesn't specify when or how this compensation be made. And many dissenters ended up with nothing through good old loopholes and bureaucracy some of whom are still pursuing their claims to this day. But the chilling thing is, those left with empty pockets consider themselves lucky. There is a saying they mutter amongst themselves under their breath, that at least they had the luck to not live in Sierra. Time to floor it.
Ha <laughs> ha it's finally time for a new engine. I'm completely skipping the turbo light engine, which I feel like is what you were intended to get after the basic carbureted one, but I just was never able to find the thermosap crystals. I must have missed some obvious source of them or something. So we're just skipping right to the amp engine. So compared to the original, which has 128 horsepower, the amp engine has 234. So nearly a double in horsepower. That should be pretty incredible. It has 100 more hit points. Not that I've ever had any issue with the engine getting hurt, really. And because it uses electricity, it, well, doesn't need fuel, which means I guess I don't need to fill up anymore. And I can also get rid of the sideboard extra fuel and replace those with batteries, because I'm sure I'm going to need a lot of electricity. Oh, I'm excited. I'm not going to recycle the carbureted engine. I'm just going to leave it for now, just in case. Just, just, just in case this sucks up like way too much power and it's unusable at the moment. Oh man, that looks fancy. Okay, let's get a feel for it. Is it going to sound different? Oh yeah. Oh, it's got like a super smooth, I guess kind of like an electric car sound. Super smooth, really quiet. Oh man, does it accelerate faster. See, so yeah, acceleration noticeably faster. I wonder if the top speed is higher as well. Don't know. But yeah, oh man, it is immediately obvious. And how much power are we pulling down? So if I turn off the lights, does it use power when you're not moving? Probably not. No. 90.4. Mm. Okay, I should probably look where I'm going. But yeah, if you look at the power it's sucking down, it does suck down power pretty fast. I'm definitely going to need significantly more batteries. Yeah, I think it only uses power if you are putting more power into the system. So even if you're still rolling, if you're not actually pressing down the pedal and you're just coasting, I don't think it uses power. Or if it does, it's like very slight. Nice. Okay, let me see what um, battery upgrades I can do. There's really no reason to turn off the car, is there? It doesn't idle, I don't think. It doesn't even make any noise. You can barely even tell it's off, or on, rather. Okay, I did something pretty ridiculous, but it kind of works. Instead of adding more batteries, I added more energy generation. There's a lot of very conditional ones, like the lightning rod, which takes, obviously, if lightning hits you, recharges. There's one that recharges when there's rain, but that depends on the weather. I don't want to rely on the weather. I want something that's always going to work. And you know what always works? The wind turbines. At least they work when you're moving. But of course, I only actually use up energy from the engine when I'm moving. So they basically always work. I installed four. I got rid of the two side gas cans. Don't need them anymore. I got rid of the side storage. I don't need it anymore because I upgraded our storage in the back. So I'm sure this probably has about equivalent storage. I don't need the lightning rod anymore because I'm only generating energy with my turbines. Let me show you how well it works. When you're just getting started and you're at a very slow speed, you do go through energy pretty fast. But then as you speed up, they start spinning faster. And you can see it's like slightly, it keeps like shining the up arrow and we're actually gaining energy very slightly. And that's with my lights on. If I turn it off, then I'll definitely gain energy. So yeah, as long as you're above like 40 miles per hour, you're going to roughly break even, maybe be slightly in the positives. 
and I think I'm going to spend most of my time at a pretty high speed. So I think this is going to work really well. Let's make ourselves an acid raincoat, 15% acid resist. Crafted some carbon fiberglass and got some rubber from the car outside. Now we can craft the sealed suit, acid resist, 30%. New facts. We're seeing amazing tardigrade variations here. Gorgeous specimens displaying unusual behaviors. Okay, hold on. I just got this idea and I have to test it. The nitro booster takes the place of a bumper. It doesn't have to be in the back. So logically, if you place it in the front like this, if I activate it, it's going to boost me backwards, right? Please tell me they implemented that. <laughs> they did! Oh, I love that. Going to head to the deep zone crossing now. I'll bring you back when something interesting happens. Found a message. Of the witnesses to the CRM disaster that are still alive, most aren't willing to speak to me. The one eyewitness account remains the most damning report of what happened. Meet Lou Arganza. She was nine when she last saw her parents alive. You were born in the zone. Yes. Born and raised in Sierra Town until, well, until it wasn't a town anymore. Lou was evacuated from the zone on February 13th, 1973. Can you share what you remember from that day? Sure. I was at a week-long wilderness camp. This yearly thing my elementary school would put on. They throw the kids into the woods, show us how to pick apart, animal dropping, sketch birds, you know, things like that. We're at the old wall now. You're not the first to try crossing the old wall since the anomalies moved in. But we'll make sure you're the first to survive. Two things to keep in mind. First, to get through the old wall, there are five crossing points. You need to induce the electrical grid the entire way by driving the car close enough and fast enough along the conductors. You'll see them as you go. Once you jumpstart the grid, Tobias will route the mid-zone power your way, but no induction, no power, no power, no crossing. Second, watch your battery gauge. You will live or die by that thing. Got it? Good. Start by connecting the power grid at the first crossing point. The controls will be up in the observation tower. Yeah, my electricity is pretty low at the moment. Maybe it'll get recharged, but um, actually, something I made, I think off-camera, I researched and made plasma charger. So I can use this to recharge my battery. I took it from almost dead to, I think, mostly full with that much durability. So I'd say I roughly have maybe two to three full battery charges in this thing. So even if my battery is almost dead, don't worry. I got a backup. What's this looking like? Well, there's a very big power source just right in front of us. Let's go nab it. I don't know if I'm going to need it, but eh, why not? Man, this place. It has a vibe to it. Very different from any other place I've been. It's so imposing. All of these pillars. Oh, it's chaotic energy. <gasps> I need to get all the energy then. What is that? Hold on. Stop, 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 stop. What is that? Devil grinder. So imagine a dust devil, yeah? 
You know those? So imagine a dust devil, right? But turned up to the max. Yeah, I said to the max. Lenny, hold the receiver to your ear. Your ear! Yeah, so it's like a dust devil, but so much more powerful. Like small, like focused, but so strong. With the strength to just pick up trash and even stones and hurl them around. Collins has a goddamn concussion or some crap like that. A concussion? Huh? Oh, it's uh, when you hurt your head. No, not when you hurt your head. I mean, a concussion is when a person hurts their head. What'd you say? Uh, yeah, sure. Like a boxer. Okay, I don't think we need to read any more of that. <laughs> that is a confused, hasty transmission fragment. So it hurls stuff around. Must resist the urge to simply walk into it. You bastard! Oh, it fell down, thank god. Oh, hold on! This is a new anomaly! Tourist trap! Okay, I don't think I have time to read that. Yeah, it's a bunch of tourists stuck in one of those pillars. That's... creepy. Oh, hey! The wind's blowing so violently that I think I'm generating energy just by sitting here, aren't I? Yeah, look at that. Pretty slowly, but it is happening. Well, not anymore. This car feels so good to drive now. It's so snappy and responsive and fast. Well, this is a problem. But, I can do this. God, I love that. That nitro boost is so incredibly powerful. What's that? Tour bus. <laughs> We've lost Dr. Powell now too, god damn it. Yes, yes, I'm fine. Yes, I'm sure. Yes, I'll hold. Okay, I don't think we need to read this either. What happened? Stay back. Basically, don't go near it. Okay. Wait, there's another new thing. It's a resource? Beach... Beach ball. Cleanup continues, but even six weeks after February's lab explosion, we're still finding more and more gel that has escaped into the atmosphere. Between 700 and 800 cubic meters of material was ejected in the blast. We believe it was initially distributed over approximately 200 square kilometers, but given the nature of the material, it may well have traveled further. Given time, it would seem that most gel tends to settle somewhere around local ground level, regardless of environmental conditions, altitude, or air pressure. However, its very nature makes it susceptible to strong winds and meteorological changes, meaning it, m it may be many weeks before we have a full picture of the scale of distribution. In addition, it seems that a great deal of blast debris may have been mixed with, uh, perhaps even suspended in, the gel, which has a habit of slowly absorbing items it passes over. Oh, I popped the thing. Some plastic came out of it. Red balloon. Oh, 
Oh, oh, oh, I'm awfully close to you. Always worth looting these treasure troves. Hey, why isn't my auto brake working? Hold on, is there something wrong with it? Auto Parker? No, it's right there. It doesn't have any signals on it showing that it's like messing up or anything. Oh shit, my battery's almost dead. Like it's gonna be dead in 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 now in now time. The, um, oh, the F is red because I don't have enough power to use it. That's why the, the limb emitter won't work. Did it park now? Looks like it. I'm actually kind of out of space. That's fine. All right, let's recharge. Come on. I wonder if it's a cork. Probably is. Okay, I guess I want to head there, huh? Can I make a straight line for it? With my turbo boost, I don't see why not. Hmm, this is a problem. Yeah, I think I need to get back to the road. Let's hit the road over this way. That's new. Pacemaker. Most of the time, oh, this is a dictaphone recording. Most of the time, even the majority of the time, the zone makes a mess of everything. It's pure chaos out here. But sometimes, just sometimes, its eternal rearrangement creates something coherent, even useful. This time around, it looks like those useful things are reconstructions of some of our own equipment and inventions, built back into something that's actually functional. They look and behave just like several early prototypes from our first limb labs, but at the same time, it's also as if they've been assembled clumsily by a child, or by someone trying to understand how this technology works. Someone improvising, someone learning. 
Here I am trying first to understand the Limtech and then the Zone, yet sometimes I wonder if something inside it isn't also trying to learn about us. Room, room. Explosives? I just had explosives for the first time? You probably shouldn't have this. You probably need specialist training. You probably need a license. You're probably in trouble. The hell can I use that for? Wait a second. The pacemakers charge you, don't they? Yeah, that's charged me up a whole bunch. Oh, I gotta go back to the other one then. Nah, it's too far away. There we go. Be a good girl and take the roads. Or not. Just a little shortcut, okay? It's a small one. these balloons. I need them. I'm worried it's going to start rolling and roll right into that tour bus. summer tire inside of it. Peculiar. It had the peculiar tag. Looks like the zone has smiled upon you today. This part will last you only as long as it holds together. It's just like they say, if you love it, take it out for a ride, then let it go. Oh, so it sounds like it's unrepairable. stop. Is this going to charge me up? Apparently not. I mean, shouldn't it? Maybe I just need to be closer. Uh, maybe I just need to turn this on or something. I think we're meant to go up in the tower. Flip the switch in the tower to turn on circuit one. There are 
old shuttle stops at each crossing point. Use them to recharge your battery and hope they're still in working condition after all these years. Explosives into chemicals. I do actually need chemicals. Ah, but the explosives are downstairs with the car. I can't be bothered. Oh, right. Install a functioning limb shield to ensure a safe crossing. Yeah, so we have it. It is just in the trunk. Had the limb pulse emitter. Because most of the time I need that. Assign the limb shield car ability to ensure a safe crossing. Let's put it on F. Costs 0.25 per activation. Wait, how long does it last? Like, it's still... Is it still active? Yeah, I don't know. It really doesn't seem to take that much power. I thought it would take a shit ton. Let's see, how much power does this thing really have? Ooh. Not very much. Please tell me it recharges itself. Man, I hope this thing is, like... I hope that's not it. Okay. I don't really know how this is going to work. Like, okay, I'm going to... When do I use the shield? And what is my next destination? I'm on a time limit, right? I'm scared. I think I need the shield. Do I go? Shield still active? Seems to be protecting me from those things. Tobias, how's the power routing? Well, the neighbors are complaining about the flickering lights, but I told them to light some candles and skip time. Francis? Levels are good. Holy steady. <laughs> Circuit complete. Keep it up, driver. Okay. I guess I just follow the things. Yeah, I don't think you looking at the map is all that helpful. I think just follow the things. Battery's looking good. Hold on, I gotta get rid of this. My my mark there. It's distracting me. Alright, let's go. Supply is wavering. I'm working on it. A local 
battery farm's putting up a fuss. She has to be taxed like this in a while. But I'm losing her into it, don't worry. Battery farms one through three are reporting total power drain. They're spent. How long to recharge? Could take up to a day. Oh, no, I got, I got this. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Uh, I think I need to do some repairing. My car is looking pretty messed up. Shit, shit. Total power loss on stations 9 to 15. I'm on it. Don't oh, shit. Get that power back up. The gate at the final crossing point won't open without it. I'm rerouting power from battery farm 6. EC. Too much and you'll blow out your control center. Too little and the entire array's going down. We have no choice. All right, good enough. Let's go. I think I left the back door open. Can't have that. Tobias, 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 answer! 
Got a flat tire pulling me to the right. We're going deeper. Locate the stabilizer. really bad for them. Ah! No, 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 no. There we go. Just follow the road. Keep going straight till we hit here.
think I want this power source as well. What is that? Limb magnetizer. Recommend a tool scrap metal? So I can magnetize scrap metal. We continue to experience a growing demand for on-site manufacturing and engineering facilities, especially as Arda's requests for custom-built equipment increase. It's becoming difficult to keep up, and the degradation experienced within the, within the zone takes a daily toll. In particular, we find ourselves in need of a great deal of machine parts and magnets. For the latter, it has become necessary to improvise large machines that can quickly magnetize ferromagnetic elements and their alloys, in the hopes that we can mass-produce replacements. While our early prototypes were somewhat jury-rigged and themselves vulnerable to the vagaries of zone conditions, I believe I have devised a substantially sturdier solution. I'm distributing blueprints of this limb-assisted design to all department heads. I still don't quite understand what it does. If it turns scrap metal into... Magnet? Is that a resource? Well, I certainly have a lot of scrap metal. Somewhere. What does it look like? Is it... Ah, yeah. Screws. What takes magnets? I have no idea has enough pull to give it automobile applications. In other words, it can help to accelerate, restrain, or even to balance components. Well, scrap metal is easy to get. These things are not, so I should put as much scrap metal as I possibly can into that. Best way to get scrap is probably to tear apart cars. Let me do a little bit of a looting run around here. Found enough scrap metal to get six more magnets. Let's activate the stabilizer and get the hell out of here.
6.5 corrupted energy. Welcome back. Now we know where the well is. But you're the first to step foot in the deep zone in over 15 years. <laughs> and I need more time to understand Alan's suppression method. So why don't you stretch your legs and chart the deep zone while you're at it? We'll need to map away to the well as it is. Let's go ahead and upgrade our backpack. Nice. Those well, have a new fax. How many times do I have to tell you, don't drink the water? Let's replace our antenna with powered by carbs. Made some changes to the car. I'm realizing that deeper into the zone, electricity is not my biggest problem. I think it's generally hitting things. Impacts, so I researched a bunch of armored parts. Unfortunately, I couldn't kit the entire car out in armored parts because I'm missing some materials, but I've got a couple armored doors. Um, I have some, not armored, but insulated headlights. Couldn't make the armored ones, those required Olympian fragments which I have never even seen. Was it just the doors that are armored? I think so, yeah. I think I need more thermosap crystals if I want to armor anything more. Well, I think I'm going to end the episode there, so I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when we return, we're going to explore more of the deep zone. <laughs>